everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Showing a little love here to the Huskies, they won the Apple Cup, not a great season. Anyway, we're going to go to Italy, we're going to look at some of the interesting varietals that are come from Italy. Now, you know, we often when we think of Italy, we might think of uh, Chianti, probably the number one wine of Italy. Uh, everybody thinks Chianti when they think Italy, then you go up north, they think of Pinot Grigio, they think of um, uh, Barolo, Barbaresco, which are Nebbiolo, and then down south a lot of times it's Primitivo. But there's so many varietals, in fact you probably saw the movie Psalm, in that movie they said, one of the farmers there said he didn't think you could possibly memorize every grape varietal from Italy. I bet there's somebody out there that has, I'm pretty sure of that. We're going to look at three different varietals that maybe are wines that you would not would not be go-to wines for you guys. In fact, one of these wines is one that I have I'm not sure if I've ever tried it personally. So we're going to give it a try. We're going to Sicily here, and these come from the southwestern southeastern part of Sicily. And this grape is a frappato. Frappato. It's compared to a, um, a Beaujolais Nouveau or a Beaujolais, uh, you know, Gamay style wine. This is a 2016 Sorio from Firiato Sorio Frappato. And this is a Sicily is the appellation. Now, um, the cool thing about Frappato is it's often blended with Nero Diavola, another one we're going to try today. And that comes from the region of Shirasuolo di Vittoria. Shirasuolo di Vittoria is the name of the region. And the cool thing about that area, it is the first geographical area with a DOCG, DOCG status, the highest status you can get, in Sicily. In fact, that happened in 2005. And since that time, there has been no DOCGs there, as far as I'm aware of. So it's kind of cool. Uh, it blended with Nero Diavola in the Suolo di Vittoria region of Sicily DOCG status. It blends well with Nero Diavola, um, but occasionally you'll see it as a varietal on the label. So, this is the... Um, Get back to this. This is the Furiato Sorio Frappato 2016. It rolls in at $17. There's the label. Cool little bottle. Uh, kind of short and stubby type bottle. Okay. Compared to a Gamay, uh, I can already tell right off the bat. Very aromatic, by the way. Um, you know, a little darker than maybe a Gamay, but I've seen Gamays this dark before. Very red color. Um... I can almost see through it. Let's see what we get on the nose. A little bit of licorice coming through. Red flowers for sure. Cherries and licorice. A little bit of like a brick, you know, like a crushed red brick, brick, brick component coming through. Yeah, good aromatics on this wine. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very interested in this wine. Very intense. Um, spicy on the end. Very minerally. I get like crushed rock all day. Red flowers. Good acidity. Um... Yeah, I had a Beaujolais for um, Thanksgiving, or with the Thanksgiving meal. Getting a little cranberry, plum, cherry element coming through. Like I said, strong acidity on this one. It's a powerfully... Not, the most acidic wine I've ever had, but this needs food. I'm telling you right now, you have to have food with this wine. 
the crushed rock element would really appeal to a lot of those old world guys that like, I thought we saw something over there, <laughs> that thought, you know, that really liked that kind of minerality. I like it myself, it's just I wish I had something here to eat, a pile of spaghetti with red sauce or something like that. Loads of red flour. I like this wine. Well-made wine. I believe this got some ups in the Spectator recently. I don't really pay attention to scores that much. Uh, just because I think they've gotten out of hand a little bit. But um, Earthy, savory, acidic, crushed rock, red flowers, cherries, cranberry, a little bit of plum coming through. I might even be getting a little bit of pomegranate on, pomegranate on this one. Is lighter style. I can see that comparison to Beaujolais. Um, kind of cross between Beaujolais and Pinot Noir, really. I yeah. Um, needs food, like I said. Like I have a plate of spaghetti here right now. Some sausages, something like that would be really good with this wine. It has enough guts to it to really stand up to food. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B B B plus on that one. I think it's well made. Uh, maybe not being everybody's favorite, but I think the quality of this wine is really evident. If you had it with food, it'd be much better than just drinking it by itself. Uh, they say that they don't age very long, uh, two to three years, maybe four. But I like that wine for a lot of different reasons. In fact, I have a couple of friends. I'm hoping they get a chance to taste it because I think it's, it would hit many, many palates. So we're going to go BB plus on that. Let's move on. Another varietal that maybe is not a go-to for you is Dolcetto. Dolcetto, now this is cool. This is from Monferrato, which is in the southeast corner of Piedmont up in northern Italy. Uh, this is the uh, Cantin Povero 2018 Monferrato, which is a region inside of Piedmont, uh, like Longue. Monferrato is another region in there. And this rolls in at $10. Cap Capitaine del Palio. Dolcetto. There you go. Dolcetto, um, high tannins, low acid. So, pretty interesting wine. They have to uh, uh, do a lesser fermentation so they don't get so many tannins from the skin. That's how they balance it out. But that's a challenge because then you have the problem with the aromatics. So Dolcetto is a tricky grape. Um, maybe you've never tried a Dolcetto. I've always found them to be very interesting. Again, good food wines. Let's see what we get on the nose. Very, very grapey with a little edge of pipe tobacco coming through. Yeah, it reminds me of when you walk in a winery, you can smell that fermenting grapes. I'm getting a little bit of that with a little bit of that pipe tobacco. Cherry pipe tobacco. A little bit of a hard candy element coming through, which I find quite uh, intriguing. Yeah, like almost like a blackberry. You know those hard candies that you just get at Christmas time, which is coming up pretty soon? Uh, reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. A little bit of a soap action coming through, too. Interesting nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Boy, you can feel the tannic grip on this one. But on the mid palate up front, it, I would call it a very uh, delicious wine, really. I mean, it's got that hard candy, like a blackberry, um, cherry hard candy, maybe a little bit of raspberry and a little tobacco thrown in there. Um, this, um, you can, you got to be careful uh, confusing tannins with acidity. I think that those astringent tannins on the backside really kind of make your mouth water which you know kind of makes you think of acidity but this is, is a lower acid wine definitely compared to the frappato red flower notes coming through again 
This one needs food. We have two in a row. Don't be surprised that the Italian winemakers make their wines to pair with food. That's the way they think. Because food and wine are in their culture. They go together. Everywhere I went in Italy, you saw wine on the table with the food. And um, so it does need food. This is a nice little Dolcello though. It's 10 bucks if you want to try a Dolcello. But let me warn you. Did I show you the label? There. Yeah, I did. And the color. Again, same color almost as the Frappato. Maybe just a hair darker. Now they got that out of the way. Huh. You, you, what do you think? Have I ever done this before? Anyway, no, I mean, if you had food, if you had a hamburger, pizza, anything like that, with this wine, you would love it. It's not super complex, but it has a delicious category, has a deliciousness to it that I think a lot of people will like. I can see this, those tannins. Um, like I said, I could even see this with the steak. It's a little light, but it would work. I'm going to go... C plus B minus on that. Not super complex, but very interesting. Better than average. Um, Ten bucks. I think it'd be worth it to go out and try it. But please, 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 just be warned. Have it with some food. You may not like it. I don't want you to be turned off from Dolcetto because you didn't include food when you were drinking it. Let's move on. We talked about Frappato being uh, blended with Nero di Avila. So we're going to do a Nero di Avila. Terra Siciliani IG. Kira Ramonti, Nero di Avila. Kira Ramonti, what a name. This rolls in at $14. Okay, now Nero di Avila, uh, since the turn of the century, has now been coming out with it on the label. And a lot of you may be familiar with Nero di Avila. I know a lot of my customers at the store, they're very familiar with Nero di Avila. But, you know, back in the um, last century, or I believe they're even saying that, you didn't see it often on the label as a Nero di Avila. Nero di Avila means the Black of Avila. Uh, again, southeastern part of Sicily, although they grow a ton of Nero di Avila in Sicily, period. It's grown all over. It's the main grape of Sicily, Nero di Avila, the Black of Avila. A lot of people compare it to Syrah. I'm getting like like sawdust. Like I just cut a bunch of plywood and some boards. Unbelievable amount of sawdust. A little bit of cedar sawdust coming through as well. Hard to get past the sawdust, believe it or not. Getting a, definitely some cherry. A little bit of blackberry coming through in there. A little bit of tobacco and a little bit of licorice. All of those in there, it's masked by that kind of sawdust. Freshly made sawdust, like you're cutting a board. Some of those boards are cedar, some of them are not, but that's what it smells like to me. Color, quite a bit darker than the other two. I can still almost see through it, but it definitely is darker than the Lachetto and the Frappato. Let's see what we get on the, well I just did the nose. Let's see what we get on the palette. Interesting how that cedar dust comes through on the palate. Intense wine, for sure. Um, very savory on the palate. I get blackberry, a little bit of cherry, darker cherry, um, tobacco, for sure, with that cedar dust coming through. And then Black olive, big time black olive. Get a little saline element in there as well. Um, good acidity, good structure, good balance. Again, I would need food with this wine. This would stand up to be great with lamb, steak, that sort of thing. I, it's a great, be a great pizza wine. Uh, I'd love to have this with some gorgonzola popcorn. Just saying, I love gorgonzola popcorn.
the tobacco kind of blends with that blackberry and there's a little bit of minerality coming through um, yeah that cedar those cedar notes coming through as well very interesting wine I like it a lot I think it has great structure and balance uh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go B plus A minus on that one as well had you know let's just go straight up A minus I think it's an A minus wine for sure it's an IGT Nero Diavola but I think it's a good example of what Nero Diavola is all about Thank you. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You keep watching. And I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.